Okay, Bezos Shem, today's daf is daf Ayan Ches, 78. Hi, how are you? Okay, so today's daf is daf Ayan Ches, and we will begin daf Ayan Zayan Omud Beis a little bit after the Mishnah. Menomar uh, Hanimili is the Mishnah. We're going to start from my timer. Let me just make it bigger. And let's just get into what we're discussing discussing over here. Fascinating Gemara, again. Um, what we're discussing over here is that the Gepasik says at, that that somebody, a convert from Amoin, Umoyev, cannot marry a Jewish person, Jewish woman. Okay, so if somebody from Moyavi or from Amoin converts to Judaism, they cannot marry a Jewish girl, never. Never, cannot, no matter what, even if they, if many generations of an Amoin marrying an Amonis and they have an offspring and the first generation, third generation, no matter what, even 10 generations later. What's the reason? Because they're cruel. Al-Davar, Kidmu Eschem, Balechem, Ubamayim, Baderach, Betzei Eschem, Mitzrayim. As we were entering, trying to get into Eretz Yisrael, coming out of the desert, we expect some hospitality from them. And they were cold about it. They didn't offer us any bread or water. And therefore, they're not there. They're, something's wrong with their soul. They can't join up with the Jewish people. So now, so the Posix, so the Gemara says over here, now that presents a very big problem because David Amelech's mother, a grand, great great grandmother, was a woman called Rus who converted from, she was a Moabi woman, and she converted from uh, Moabi to become a Jew. So the lineage of David Amelech is very, very questionable because, uh, because it wasn't so clear from the Posik you would see that any Amoin, any Moyav, whether male or female, converts to Judaism, they can't marry a Jewish person. So there was a drasha, there, was a, there wasn't, a, it wasn't known drasha that the Torah only referred to the males that convert, not to the females. So here's the story, we're in the middle of the story, that Shaul HaMelech uh, had this problem because he had this tremendous giant coming to attack the Jewish people called Goliath, and he offered a reward for somebody who can fight the giant, and that's David, David and Goliath. So the, as David approaches Goliath, Shaul starts wondering about this person, and, and um, he asked the question, he starts thinking that perhaps this person is going to be taking over the kingdom. So that's what uh, here, that's where we're up to. My time up. So he wanted to ask a question about who David Amalek is, who David is, who is this person David? So the Gemara says like this: My time Amale Shal Ale. Why did Shaul Amalek start questioning and researching who this person David uh-huh. is? What was he so concerned the, about? The Mamawavi. No. Well, first we have to understand. What so who who cares about him? So the first the Gemara says that something strange happened to David. Dixiv, but Yalbash Shaul as David Madov. Shaul put on David his personal clothing. So David was wearing Shaul's personal clothing, and then it turned out Kimidisoy it fit David perfectly. The royal clothing fit David perfectly. Now that's impossible because Shaul was a very tall person. Uksiv bey b'Shaul b'Shich boy v'Malah gavoya mikol am. He was uh, shoulders and above uh, tall than all the people. So if Shoal was much taller, he, and all of a sudden he gives him uh, something to wear. Now, why did Shoal do that? Give something his if it wasn't going to fit him? It was just to in, give him some confidence, but not to you know not to, him to think that he could become king. But yet, when he when he put it on David, it fit perfectly. So now he's thinking to himself that David might be the next king. So that's what he was questioning. Who's David? What's his yichas? Can he become king? And they told him that he's the son of Yishai. And then, so Amalei Doyek Doimi. Doyek the red one, uh, is the advisor of Sholem Elech. And he said, Your questioning is if he's appropriate to be the king or not. Does he come from, uh, does he come from the proper uh, they, uh, Yehuda family from the Shevet Yehuda. There has to be a certain family that's going to become a king. 
Forget about if he can become, if he's from that family. Shall all love imro love kahal in love? Can David marry a Jewish girl or not? Why? My tama the kaasum rus hamay avia because his grandmother is Rus and therefore she converted to Judaism. She comes from that. The Torah says that uh, that these people were never supposed to marry Jews. Amale Avner, so Avner said, certainly he could marry a Jew. Avner is another advisor, the general of David, of Shaul Amela. Tanina, we have a Brisa, that Amoini, Vule Amoinis, it's a Mishnah actually, Amoini, Vule Amoinis, Moy Avi, Vule Avis. The Torah said only the male Amoins and the male Moy Avi are not supposed to marry Jewish uh, women. But we can darshan that it means only the males, not the females. So, the, so Daix wasn't accepting the Mishnah. How do you know you got it right? How do you know your drush is correct? Elameata, will you say Mamze Vloy Mamzeris? Look at the Pasik. The Pasik says that the next Pasik says, um, um where, where's the Pasik that says Loyav the Pasik before? Loyave Mamzer Bekal Hashem. A Mamzer cannot either marry a Jewish person. And that applies, we know that applies to a, a female Mamzer and a male Mamzer. A female can't marry a male Jewish person, and a, a, and a male Mamzer cannot marry a Jewish girl. It applies to both. Would you say Mamzer that the Torah only answered Mamzer v'loy mam, Zeris, not the females? So now the answer is like this. By Mamzer, I don't have that problem because Mamzer, Ksiv, the Torah calls it a Mamzer. Mamzer is the description. Of uh, of the person, and so we say mum. Something went wrong in the creation of this person because czar, because something strange happened uh, to his parents. His parents uh, was an Asian shish. Something they did wrong, so he was born or she was born. So the fact that it doesn't it doesn't name it. It's not a name, but it's a description of how this person came to being. So therefore, it applies both by male and females. But Amoin and Moyavi, the Amoini and Moyavi are names, nouns, and therefore it could still allude only to the males and not to the females. So the Gemara asks, if so, Mitzri v'loy Mitzris. The Torah says, um, the, a Mitzri is now to come into Ka'al Hashem. Would you say that it's only the male Mitzrim, the Egyptians, not the females? So the answer is, so therefore, how do you know it applies to both? So now the Gemara says, I'll tell you why I think it only applies to men. True that the word amoini could mean both men and female. The word mayavi could mean both men and, uh, and male and female. But Shana Hocha, the reason why I think it's only males, the Mefarish Tama the Kra. The Torah tells you why they, the, uh, God is angry at the Moyavi people. Why? Because they didn't greet you with bread and water when you needed it. They're cruel people. So we can only blame the men of, of Moab not doing that. Because it's the, the male is the, supposed to be the most welcoming of them, of between the male and the female. The male is the one that's supposed to welcome. You can't, it's not the way of a woman to welcome people. So you cannot blame the women for what happened at that time. So therefore, God was only angry at the males, and therefore he did not allow them to become gerim, but the women are permitted. So the Gemara, so that was the, the, what they answered, Doyeg Kwa So Doyeg asked this bomb question. What, who says, why can't the woman welcome another woman? Because you're, the reason why a woman doesn't go out to welcome, because it's not uh, it's not sniut, because he's, she's going out to speak to men. But the men should have greeted the men. And the women should greet the women. That's that's the, that should have happened there. So God should have been angry at both of them. So, so therefore, perhaps even the women are included, are not allowed to marry a Jewish person. So therefore, David comes from a very questionable lineage. He's maybe not allowed to even marry a Jewish woman. Ishtik, so everybody was silent. Miyad, right away, everybody, he asked, Avner, ask who is this He'elam, this uh, lad? So wait a second. Hosim Kari Nar. One time, Shaul Amelech said, talked about David as the Nar, the young man. Hocha Kari Elam. Now you're calling him uh, the young teenager, uh, uh, the, you know, the just, you know, the 12 year old. What does this word Ella mean? So Hachi Ka'amale, this is what Shaul said. Ha'alachin is Alma Mecha. 
you don't know what the right halach is. We don't know uh, uh, if it if it included the male and the female. So he instructed that Avder say ushal be base medrash. So go ask in the shuls what what they think uh, uh, the halach is. Shal. So Avner went and asked the question the base medrash. Amrule. So they told Avner, "You're right. Amoni v'lo amonis, mayavi v'lo amu abis." So it's only the males and not the females. That's what the year response. We go to Ein Zayin Amar Aleph. So actually, Doyeg Kol Hanik Kishusya. So he Doyeg asked the Beis Medrash to the boys that were learning or whatever, and all the to Sanhedrin, all the questions that Doyeg asked. It cannot be this way. And then, and then the bottom line question was, why would God only be angry at the males for not greeting the? Uh, uh, greeting people, greeting the Jewish people with bread and water, the females should have greeted the females of the Jewish people. Ishtiku. So everybody was silent. So it came this very close. Boyu lachruzele. They wanted to make a new announcement and say, David Amelech, David, he wasn't king then, David, you, you got to divorce your wife or if you're married. You can't marry a Jewish woman. You come from such a questionable lineage. Miyad, at that moment, somebody came to the rescue, and his name is Vamosa ben Ish Ushmo Yisra Ha Yisraeli, and Ashabo El Abigail Bas Nochash. This person, Amosa ben Ish, he's son of a person. Who is this? Who is he a son of? Yisra Ha Yisraeli. So his father's name was Yisra Ha Yisraeli. Uksiv, and then the Pasik, and another Pasik in Debe Yamim, we describe this Amosa as Yeser Ha Yisraeli. And it's a play on words. They call him the son of Yeser, the Yishma, the Arab, right? So why do we call him an Arab? What 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 is this person coming to the rescue? Amarava. So this person Amasa came to the rescue of David Amalek, David, and he said Amarava. Rava said Malama Shechorber Charbay Ki Yishmael. He he bolted himself with a sword and came into the shul at that time like an Arab, a big long sword. For Omar, and he said, he made an announcement, call me with a weapon, call me she'ena shomei halacha zu, whoever is not going to listen to the following halacha, yidaka becherem, I will stab him with this sword. He said, kach mukublani mbeistinoi shel Shmuel Haramasi. I have a tradition from the chief court of Shmuel Haramasi, Shmuel Anavi, that we darshin amoyni v'loy amanis, moy avi v'loy amavis. It's only the males and not the Females. It's a tradition. Could be a halacha l'moish mesinai. With all your questions, it doesn't matter. Halacha l'moish mesinai said that it only applied to the men and not to the women. So first, the Gemara says, "Umi mehemet." Can we trust somebody like that? He he came in and says, "I have a tradition." Rav Abba said in the name of Rav, "Kol Talmud Chacham." Any Talmud Chacham shemoyre halacha uba that that gives a psak. He gives a he gives an opinion, a, a, a psak halacha, and then and then he claims that it's tradition. In Masa Amra, if he came and was teaching this tradition before the question was asked, Shaimullah, then we listen to him because he's obviously telling the truth. He was always saying that there's a tradition like that. Vim love, but if he never said anything about a tradition, and then the question was asked, and then he starts coming up that there is a tradition that this is the way it is. We don't believe him. So we shouldn't trust him because the question was first asked. And now he's coming with a sword and saying, you better believe me because uh, I have a tradition. I, I'm speaking from a tradition. We, we don't believe him. Perhaps uh, perhaps he's, he's, in, he's an interested party over here. So the answer is, Oshani Ocho, over here we're different. And we do believe this ish, uh, um, Amasa, the Hashmuel based Dine Kayan. Shmuel was still around, and we could go directly to Shmuel and ask him, Did you say that uh, that that's my 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 office? So therefore, that that's why it's tradition, no questions asked. It's only the males, not the females. And therefore, David was saved. The Gemara just wants to know. At the end of the day, it's very difficult. The Pasuk says that God is angry at the Moyavi people because they're not welcoming people. They're a little bit cruel. And therefore, and therefore, uh, that should definitely apply to the women. If the women should have greeted the Jewish women with, with bread and water. So why don't we fault the, the, the Moyavi woman? 
answers the Gemara, Hocha Tar Gumoy, in, in, in Bavol, they translated, they brought a, an answer to that question because the Pasuk says, Kol Kvuda Basmelach Pimimo. The daughter of a king, the honor of a daughter of a king is that she remains inside. In other words, that even though technically they, they should have came out to greet the Jewish women, but we cannot fault a woman who has sneers and modesty that she doesn't want to leave her home and go out to, uh, onto the street, so to speak. So we can't fault them for, for not being that way. And by Marava Amai and in Eretz Yisrael, they brought a Pasuk from Chumash where we see the same idea. Vitenu, Vitem Rabbi Yitzchak. Omakra, the Pasuk says, when the Malachim came to visit Avram Avinu, they asked, Vayomru Elav Aye Sora Ishtecha, where is Sora your wife? And, and uh, she, he said that she's in the tent. So we see that the best part of a woman the, the honor of a woman is, is she doesn't always go outside uh, just to be outside. She's more modest and taking care of the home. Therefore, we cannot fault these Mayavi women for not greeting the Jewish people in the desert, even to go out to greet other Jewish women. And because of that, therefore, um, they were excluded from the prohibition of, of Aloyave Amonia Mavi Bekal Hashem. It's interesting, and this is something to think about. This whole lineage of David Amelech came through a question, and that David could not come from a normal family. He had to come from a from a mixture mixed family of uh, of Gerim, of Amayabim that mix into into the Jewish family, which was questionable, as you can see. And then we can have David, which brings Mashiach. So I once heard that the simple shot is that the Jewish people need the outside uh, nation of Moab because the Jewish nature is to be too Rachmanim, too, too merciful, too forgiving. You need a little toughness in the Jewish people to create you know, quality people. And we see that the Mayavi people were a little bit cruel and tough. So the women, as, as the Pasuk says, so therefore that togetherness, the Jewish Rachmanis, and a little bit of toughness that you get from the Mayavi that creates David, the greatest leader, and that creates the created the Mashiach, Bemheri Menu. But we learned this a couple of Dafim ago that there should be grafts to the Jewish people. We have to graft some from uh, from the other from the from Gerim and from Goyim. Right, but to make the greatest Jewish person, this after Moshe Rabbeinu is the Mashiach, come from this kind of question that in in their blood yeah. is Mayavi blood in there. Yeah, yeah, but you need you need certain characteristics that are not innate in a Jewish right. person. So that's why I should, that was because I always wanted to find out what it meant when we learned it a couple of dozen ago. What does it have to be grafted onto the Jewish soul, the Jewish the Jewish uh, uh, person, the fiber, and that would be a typical per perfect. The Mashiach himself from David have to have a graft from from the Moavit from root. Right. Yeah. But it, it seems that their characteristic is a little bit toughness. Right. Which exactly what graphs do. Right. You don't have the, the, the genetic lineage is not there. You have, to, you have to take genes from other places to make it a better, a, 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 a better selection. Right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, I'm on that point as well. Excellent. Kitanoi, it's the, the same achleik as tanoim. What is the source of that? It only means men and not women. Amoini v'lay amoinis, mayavi v'lay mayavis, divi Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says you learn from the word amoini. The pastor could have said amoin, or the pastor could have said mayav. But by saying ye, with the extra yud, your darshan, it doesn't mean woman. He says, no, I, you, do, you know it from this Pasuk. The reason that they can't uh, bring the, uh, we can't take them because they don't welcome the Jewish people. Then we only fault the men, not the women. Dorash Rava. Rava said, what, did, what is this Pasuk talking about? When David as Melech said, Pitachto. God, thank you. You released Lemoisera my chains. Amar David Lefnei Hakadosh Baruch Hu. David said to God, Rebbeinu Shloim, Master of the World, Shnei Moisrei Shahoyalai Pitachtem. I had two chains on me that held me back. That people were not uh, accepting me. What is that? Rus Hamoy Avia Benama Hamamanes. This the Rus Hamoy Avia is David Amelech's grandfather, grandmother. 
Nama Hamaimanis, there's another ger called Nama, right? And she married Shlomo, and they had a son, Rachavim. So Rachavim comes from that, that lineage, which is the only part member of David Amelech's family that survived. In other words, the rest of David, David's family got, got wiped out. But one side that has both the Mayabi part and the Amoini part survived, and that's where Mashiach is going to come. So Mashiach has both qualities, Mayabi and Amoinis, and of course the Jewish quality. So God released two chains of David Amelech by permitting the women to be married into Jewish people. Darash Rava, Rava had another drasha. Maidiksiv, what's the Pasik says? Rabba siyat Hashem l'kenef l'sech mashav secha eilenu. Eilai l'inema eilenu. Malame, this teaches, Pasik teaches you that God is thank, that David is thanking God. Show your Rechavim, Rechavim, this baby Rechavim, again, this is Shlomo HaMelech's son, who ended up taking over before, uh, after Shlomo passed. So he was a baby. Yosheh Becheke Shal David. Now, who was Rechavim's mother? Nama. And David was sitting with his grandson on the lap, on the line, and he said, Me and you have this problem. I come from Mayavia, and you come from Namaham And God, you know, had a lot of thought by making this our, you know, our DNA, so to speak. Doresh Rava Rava said, My Siv, what's the Pasuk that says, Azimati Nibasa Bimigila Sefer, Kosova Lai? Um, David, this is what David said. Aniyamati atabasi. I thought that right now they decided my fate. Uh, uh, if I'm allowed to be married a Jewish person, a Jewish a Jewish woman, v'loy yadati. I did not know shabe megila sefer kosovalai. This was already written in the Chumash that I'm permitted to marry. Uh, um, I'm permitted to come the kahal Hashem. Why? Hasan ksiv. The pasuk says hanimtza ois that by Lot's daughters, when they were found, that when they survived Sodom, the Torah says that they, the word Hanim Tsa'os, that they were just there. Uh, so that's, the, that's the, 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 the grandmother, so to speak, of the whole nation of Amoin and Moab. And Hachaksif, Mitzasi, David, Avdi, B'Shem, and Kachi, Mishachtid. So already it was alluded that Nimsois that we're going to allow there's part of Amin and Moyev to become part of the David family. And that's already uh, hinted to in the Chomish. Zogdi Gemara. Ama Ula Am Rabbi Yechen. Bas Ger Amoini Kesheri Lekuhuna. New Gemara. That the daughter of a Ger of Amoini is Kesher to Kuhuna. What does that mean? So the Gemara is thinking now that if an Amoini uh, a convert marries an Amoinis convert, so their offspring is you know they're permitted to marry each other because she's not the Amoin uh, ger is allowed to marry an Amoinis Gioris. Their offspring, if it's a girl, she can marry a Cohen. If it's a girl, she can marry a Cohen. You would think that since the father is somebody that come come cannot come in Kahal Hashem. So the daughter cannot either marry a Kohen or something should be wrong with the daughter. Comes along Rabbi Yechen and says that this daughter is Kishera to marry a Kohen. Amalei Rav about Ula Leula. Come on, who does Rabbi Yechen coming to teach this novelty? Ik Rabbi Yehuda, would you say it goes according to Rabbi Yehuda? There's an opinion Rabbi Yehuda brought elsewhere in Kedushin. Ha'amar, he said, I believe it's in Kedushin, right? Ha'amar, Rabbi Yehuda, the Tana Rabbi Yehuda said, if if any girl, let's say two uh, two Chinese people, a Chinese man marrying a Chinese woman, according to Rabbi Yehuda, that girl cannot marry a coin. So certainly, it wouldn't matter if an Amoin marries an Amoinis. You would say that the daughter is cannot marry a coin either, because Rabbi Yehuda says any girl marrying a coin, any girl marrying a Gioras cannot. The daughter cannot be marry a coin. That's what he said. So it, Rabbi Yochanan cannot be teaching you uh, according to the opinion of Rabbi Huda. If, if Rabbi Yochanan is going according to Rabbi Yaisi, pshita, Rabbi, that's, so then you don't even need to teach me that. Ha'amar, Rabbi Yaisi said, Afger, a regular Chinese lager, let's say, Shinosa Gioris married a Chinese woman ger, Bito Kishere Lekahuna, their daughter is Kashal Lekahuna. So why would I think that an Amoy, Mary and Amoy Nis, their daughter should not be Kashal Lekahuna? Of course their daughter is Kashal Lekahuna. That's what Rabbi Yaisi says, a Ger marrying a Gioris uh, is the daughter's Kashal Lekahuna. 
So the Gemara says, maybe not, maybe there is a novelty. Would you say, maybe the, by, by a Chinese marrying a Chinese woman, there's no problem there. Here, we're talking about the father is somebody who he, who he himself could never marry a Jewish woman. A Chinese girl could marry a Chinese, uh, could marry a Jewish woman. So, so maybe I would think since the father is somebody who cannot become, become a, marry a Jewish woman, she's so. Therefore, I would think that uh, that uh, uh, that certainly that the, the daughter would be co- uh, not uh, kosher to kain. So the Gemara says minale. So then, how would you know uh, that that how would you know that to say that the daughter should not be permitted to marry a kain? So Rabbi Yochanan would have said the Yalf me kain gadol ba almana. A kain gadol is not allowed to marry an almana. If the kain gadol does marry the almana, the daughter is not permitted to marry a kain. Is not permitted to marry a kain. So I would think an amoyni marrying an amoyni is the daughter is not permitted to marry a kain. So if you're going to learn it from a kain gadol to almana to prohibit that mal a kain gadol ba almana she came be also by vera. A kain gadol cannot marry an almana. That's why their daughter is possible for a kain. But an Amoyni could marry an Amoynis. So, so what's the, how could you learn it from Amana to Kain Gadol? So the Gemara says, Cholol Yechia. I'll learn it from a Cholol. A Cholol is, is a Kain that lost his Kedusha. How does a Kain lose his Kedusha? Let's say his father, the Kain, married a, a Grusha. So he is a Cholol. If he marries a Bas Yisrael, this Cholol, his, his Psul goes on to his daughter. And therefore his daughter cannot marry a Kain. So therefore, that would be the same key case by Amoini marrying Amoinis, uh, that their daughter can't marry a kain. But then if that's where you're learning it from, the Chol himself was created through an Avera. And therefore, there, therefore uh, his daughter is possible. Masha'en came Amoini marrying Amoinis. And there's nothing wrong with the Amoin. He wasn't created with an Avera. So the Gemara says, Kain Gadol, you'll learn it from the Kain Gadol. Both scenarios, a Cholol marrying a Bas Yisrael, or Kain Gadol marrying a, an Almona, their daughters cannot marry Kains. So why don't we say, learn it from both of them, that the Amoini marrying an Amoinis can also, cannot also marry a Kain. The bottom line, the bottom line scenario, the bottom line, What's what's a uh, denominator that's equal, that's the same by all the cases. She'ena b'roiv kahal. This is something that that cannot marry. These people cannot marry anybody. Uh, the the Amoin cannot marry a regular Jewish woman, and a kohen gadol cannot marry uh, uh, an almona, and a cholol cannot even if the cholol who was created with an avera cannot could marry Yisrael, but the bita psula. Their daughters is puzzle. Afkan, so I would say over here, Amoin marrying an Amoinish, ain't a Baroiv Kahal. That's something that's not uh, by most of the congregation. It's not it's not a common scenario. We'll say Ubita Psula, their daughter is possible. So the Gemara says, Malat Sada Shava Shabahem, Shekin Yesh Ben Sada Beira. Does something have to do with an Avera? A Chol was born out of Avera. Kain Godel marrying a Kain an Almana, he's doing an Avera. So, so therefore, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that a um, moini marrying an amoinis that their daughter should be pasul uh, kuna. So, what the gemara is coming out right now, a moini marrying an amoinis for sure, the daughter could marry a kain. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that marriage. But ba the what was the chiddush of Rabbi Yechinin? Is in a scenario with an amoini should not sabas Yisrael amred. If an Amoini married a Bas Yisrael, he did an Avera and married a Jewish woman. Afagav the Biosa be Avera, even though he, he, the marriage is with an Avera, he wasn't supposed to. Would the, would the daughter be kosher? Is that what Rabbi Yechen is trying to say? Uh, an illegal marriage can produce a girl that could marry a Kayin. Amalei, so Rabbi Yechen said in that the night, so he answered back, uh, Ulab, to explain that yes, Rabbi Yechen did say that. The he also Ravin Om Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Ravin came from Israel. He sent the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Basker Amoini Bas Mitzri Sheni Rabbi Yochanan Om Kishera Rabbi Shlakish Om Pesula. The daughter of a Ger Amoini. If just the father is an Amoini, that daughter is is kosher. Shlakish says Pasul. 
Rashak is Shaman Psula that the Aleph Mikhain Gadl Balmana. Anytime there's an illegal marriage, like a Kain Gadl marrying an Ammona, their daughter cannot marry a Kain. So an Ammani marrying a Bas Yisrael, their daughters also for a Kain. That's for sure. That's what Shlokish said. Rabbi Yechon and Amad Kesher, Rabbi Yechon says it's kosher. We go to Amad Beis. The Tanur Rabzakai, Rabzakai Kamed Rabbi Yechon. Rabbi Zakai taught a uh, teaching in front of Rabbi Yechon. Ki im besula me'amav yikach isha. That we darshan, lahavi giyoris mikana shi kisheru lakuna. That only a giyoris that comes from this union. In other words, that that it, it comes from this union. The Torah tells you that um, that a kohen gadol could only marry a besula. Also, we darshan that it may amov that only if the father and mother are from one nation and she was born by kedusha, then the kohen gadol can marry. A kohen could marry that, but in the exception would be an amoyni from who is an amoyn marrying a bas yisrael. They're not from the same nation. And therefore, and since the Bia was an Abeira, therefore the daughter is possible. That's what Rabzake said. But Amale and Rabbi Yechenin said, not true. Ani shoyna amov me amov. That even one of the nations, lahavi besula haba bebeis amemen. If a girl, a daughter, comes from two different types of parents, one father is an Amoin and the mother is a Jewish woman, even though the, uh, there's an Abeira in that marriage, I include that, that the coin could marry. What does Rabbi Yechonin mean? The, the girl comes from two nations. If it's an Amoy marrying an Amoynis, that they're from the same nation. That Rabbi Yechonin was referring to an Amoy marrying a Bas Yisrael. So this is the important point. That Amoini, uh, marrying a Bas Yisrael, they did a big Avera marrying each other. He's male and it says he's not supposed to marry Kal Hashem. The daughter is permitted to marry a Kohen. Unlike other illegal marriages, like a Kohen Gadol marrying an Amona and their daughter is not permitted to marry a Kohen. This illegal marriage is permitted. And we darshan from the word Amav, extra men, include that, that, that scenario as well. And Ike de Amre, others have it more explicit where Rabbi Yechinen actually said it, Beferish, outright that that scenario produces a girl, an Amre marrying a Bas Yisrael, the daughter is permitted to marry a coin. Amale, this is what Rabbi Yechinen said. Ani shayna amav me'amav, lahavi pesula haba'a m'shnei amemim, u'me'am sh'yesh bo'y shnei amemim. And from a nation that has two types of people. What nation has two types of people? That's the nation of Amoin. The nation of Amoin has two types of people. The males are never permitted to marry a Jewish person, and the females are permitted to marry a Jewish person. And that included from that union, their child, at Amrit, Dioris, Mikanab, Tulai. So that's the answer. So then now the Gemara asks one more question. One more question, two more questions, and we'll stop. Lishna, Bas Mishni the daughter of a Mitzri Shani, a Mitzri Shani marrying a Bas Yisrael. Let's say a Mitzri, the only time a, a, um, the only time an Egyptian is allowed to marry a Jewish woman is he the third generation Egyptian. But let's say a second generation Egyptian, he's number two, and he marries a Bas Yisrael. How do you know that his daughter is permitted to claim? He, he also made an illegal marriage. Menale, how do you know that? Would you say the Yisrael? Just like an Amoin marrying a Bas Yisrael, you're saying the daughter is Kasha Lakuna. So a Mitzri Shani marrying a Bas Yisrael is also a legal marriage that produces girls that can marry Koyans. Mala But by a Mitzri, uh, a Mitzri marrying a Bas Yisrael, the, generally the, the, the Amoin people, women were always permitted. So once they have a daughter, that's why that daughter from the union of Amoy marrying a Bas Yisrael, that union produces a daughter, a girl. Even if she was an Amoy girl, she would marry, be able to marry a Koyin. But Mitzri Shani, Shinosa Mitzri Shnia, so therefore, but how do you know Mitzri Shani produce, going with a Bas Yisrael, produces a daughter that can marry a Koyin? So the Gemara says, Mitzri Shani, Shinosa Mitzri Shnia Yechia. They produce a Mitzri Shani, a second generation, marrying a second generation Mitzri, produces a third generation 
uh, Mitzri, no matter what, could marry a Bas Yisrael, could marry a Bas Yisrael or a girl could marry a Kohen. So then you say, Mala Mitzri Shenosa Mitzri Shniya Shekain Eim Biyase Be'Avera. There's no Avera when a, a second generation Mitzri marry each other, They're both Egyptians. But what we're talking about specifically over here is a Mitzri who's a second generation, supposed to marry, she's supposed to marry only a mitzvah, but he marries a Bas Yisrael. How do you know that girl is going to be kosher to marry a kohen? You learn it from Amoni marrying a Bas Yisrael. If their daughter is kosher, a Mitzvah marrying a Bas Yisrael is also kosher, and you learn it from Mitzvah marrying a Mitzvah Shani, marrying a Mitzvah Shani, and that's the thing. Amar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Haina Dishmana Leila Rav Yehuda, the Ama Ama Amav, Lo Yadana Mai Kama. Rav Yehuda, I heard the same thing from Rav Yehuda, who concurred with Rav Yochanan. And that said that Amav, from the word, the extra mem, we darshim that even a Amoin marrying a Bas Yisrael, uh, the, the, the daughter is kosher to a Kayin. And Rabbi Yehuda says, we darshan this, and he, he didn't explain himself. Now I know what Rabbi Yehuda meant. Rabbi Yehuda meant to say that in the case of Amoy marrying a Bas Yisrael, that daughter is, is, is permitted to marry a Kayin. One more piece. He also Rabbi Shmuel bar Yehuda Omar. Hachi Tani Kamei. There was a brisa taught in front of Rabbi Yochanan, and, 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 um, and listen to what Rabbi Yochanan said. He, the Rabbi Yochanan said, this brisa, you could throw it in the garbage, basically. Just, it, it makes no sense. Isha Amoinis Kishere. The Brysa says a woman, a Mainis woman, can marry a, a Jewish person. That we know. But no me Amoini Puzzle. The male from, let's say this Amoinis married an Amoini, their son is a male. He cannot marry a Jewish woman. Ubita me Amoini. But if they have a daughter, if an Amoini marry a Mainis, like their mother, Kishere is Kishere to marry a Jewish man. Both the Amoin and the woman made became a ger. Uh, then, then, then the son is apostle, the daughter is kosher. Her daughter from an Amoini, Psula. So something is wrong with this part of the Bryce, right over here. Amalais, Rabbi Yechon said, Puk Tanebra Lebara. Take this uh, Bryce outside the base Medrash. Something is wrong. Don't teach it in the base Medrash. Because most of the brisa makes sense, except the end of the brisa. My da amret isha amoinis kashera amoiniv la amoinis. The Torah says yes. I agree that it only refers to males, not to females. So that part of the brisa is good. But no, my amoini posel da amoinihi. The reason why the son is posel is because he's an amoin. He's a male. Will beat the amoini kashera. But if they have a child, a girl, that's kosher. Lamai ilay malave bekahal hashti imik shera hima boya ala lekahuna. That means it's not just that the daughter from this union, Amoy marry Amoy Nis, that their daughter could marry a Jewish person. The mother can marry a Jewish person, certainly the daughter. But it's a bigger chiddush. When Amoy marries Amoy Nis, their daughter can, could marry a Koyim. So that's simple. That's the same case. You just talk, discuss that. The Bryce says if an Amoini marries a Bais Yisrael, their daughter is Puzzle. That's what this Bryce says. So that's why Rabbi Yochanan said, this Bryce, take it out of the base Medish. That's incorrect. I hold an Amoin marrying a Bais Yisrael, their daughter could uh, marry a Kohen. So that's the bottom line. We just finished up this sugya. But what we just learned, two points, two points to remember. An Amoin marry Amoinis, their daughter is Kosh, their daughter could marry even a Kohen. Comes along Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Yochanan is of the opinion that even if an Amoin married illegally a, a Bas Yisrael, that it's an illegal marriage, but their daughter could marry a Kohen. Okay.